Toronto Raptors, regardless of who was out there on the floor and who wasn't for the dubs, it was a game that they came to win on the road, and they did 38 times. The finals have been even at one after two games. 31 of the 38. The winner in game three has won the championship. The Raptors by 14 at Oracle. Inspired performance by Steph Curry, historic in some ways, but with no KD and no Klay Thompson, no win for the Dubs, suddenly challenged now down two to one with question marks about two of their stars heading into game four and the rest of this series. The crowd filing out in a way they haven't in six finals games at home, and that is with a loss. They had come in winners of five straight this postseason at Oracle, five straight in the finals at home. It's their first loss in a finals at home in the KD era, even though asterisk, of course, he did not play. Meanwhile, Steve up in Curry. the north, like this should make everyone feel better in T.O. not able to be here hanging out together. Now two wins away from a place they've never been before. Here's a place you have been with us. It is game time here live at the finals presented by YouTube TV. Casey Stern, C. Webb, Jet, Shaq. Guys, we knew Shaquille that it was going to be a tough task without Clay. You knew you were going to have to get a monster, unbelievable game from Steph. They lost, but you got that monster, unbelievable, and really an inspiring performance from Steph as well. You know, Steph played well. Uh, you know, he was going to have to come out and do that. Uh, he was home. He was comfortable. But the others for the uh, Golden no, State, State the Warriors didn't, didn't. There was a man that's responsible yeah, let's get to the story. for the real game Everybody tonight. at Golden State should hate Shaq. Without question, before In the general, game, but before also the game, because of this. Well, because Shaq, of what he did to him, yeah, he personally. Tapped, he tapped me on the side, and he looked at C-Webb, and he said, my rookie over there playing around. He's talking about Danny Green. True story. He said, Danny, come over here. Come over here. And he grabbed him over, said, whispered something in his ear about getting ready for the game and said you wasn't doing it. Said it on the air. Danny, He said, Danny Green will have his breakout game tonight. Because Danny I, went to the other side well, and started really shooting hard. And I go to Kenny. I said, man, I think he's going to have a I big game. And I was like, no, I said, it can't big be Big fella that. got him focused. No, we, said, we didn't believe. But we did, uh, yeah. Now, we don't have, I don't believe, the dream sequence music they might put on this. But, Shaq, we do take you back uh, to the past in the DeLorean to this moment from earlier tonight. I mean, what I saw about Danny when I was with Cleveland, a guy didn't get a lot of playing time, but he practiced hard. You know, he battled against, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, Booby Gibson, uh, you know, uh, LeBron James every day. And, you know, I told him, I said, look, I play with a lot of shooters. And I'm not going to tell you how to message your shot because I've never been a shooter, but I play with D. Scott. I play with guys, Jeff Turner. Every time they left it, just leave it up there. I've seen Stoyakovich, and I play with Rick Fox, uh, Big Shot Bob. Every time they leave it, it goes in. So I, I used to always tell him, just leave it. And then, you know, he went on and played with the Spurs. Like, I'd go down there and see him, and I always tell him. I just brought him over here because I saw him messing around in the warm-ups. I said, hey, man, this is the finals. Leave it and stop effing around. Get your game right. Yes, he, Here is the video of the whisper heard around the basketball world. And it wasn't a nice whisper. I wish I could repeat what I said. But listen, all these young guys, uh, you know, I, I play with him. And I've been a leader of my whole career. And listen, this is the finals, and he hasn't been playing well. And we all know what he can do. When he was with the system, C Coach Popovich was me. Coach Popovich would pull him to the side and say whatever. And I, I just, look, I, I just want everybody to, you know, play at a high level. And I saw him messing around. You know, I was over here looking, and it kind of upset me. And I pulled him to the oh, side. It upset you. Yeah, it did. Because, you know, he's out there laughing and joking. When you're shooting 20%, it ain't no laughing and joking. But like, I used to come out here. Head. Yeah, I mean, like, I used to come out here and see Samaki and Devin Jordan guys, and I used to pull them back I and say, hey, man. I love you just laid out two dudes. <laughs> no, because no, no, right. no, you know what? Uh, you Chris Webber hates Paul, 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 Chris Webber hates Samaki Walker. Shout well, out Walker, to my man, Samaki Walker. Devin Jordan. won the championship after <laughs> you know, dancing on stage with Shaq. Shaq, can you, dude? Samaki, we might win three. We might win four. Uh, you, you know what's funny, too, is because when we saw Kenny, look, the Warriors, one thing, they – ton of fight in this game. Not just from Steph. They were diving on the ball, grabbing loose balls, rebounds, doing the best they could. But the three-pointers from Danny Green, the one from Van Vliet late, a couple from Gasol, it was the three-point line, Jet, where really the Raptors seemed to shut down any momentum when the Warriors started to get the crowd into it late. Well, it's a different game when, obviously, when there's no Clay Thompson on the floor. 
because the defensive assignments change dramatically. The passing lanes change, change dramatically because you have to start guarding both Clay and Steph at such a high area of the floor. It leaves so many more driving lanes for Draymond. But now one side of the floor all of a sudden shrunk in because you don't have to guard guys at the distance. So your help defense is better. Your recovery defense is better. But when both of them, or three of them, when Duran is on the floor, it makes it virtually impossible to play the one thing that you learn when you first pick up the basketball to play defense. Help and recover. You cannot do that when they have those shooters on the floor. So the basketball principles that you learn from door are thrown out the window. And this question goes to the panel. Have you ever been in a club and see somebody dance? They're in rhythm and then they do a move and then they're off rhythm? Toronto yeah. played in rhythm all night. No ill-advised shots, draw, kick. When they got the lead with four or five minutes, I mean, you know, when they you know, had the lead in the fourth quarter, five minutes left, they came down, they took their time, and they played great. The others played great. Kyle Lowry. Yeah. This yes. is why me and Kenny. Give Kyle Lowry some you know, love. Th this is why me and Kenny and Charles were always on Kyle Lowry because the way he's playing now, we want to see him play like that all year. He's always up and down, but listen, uh, you know, this playoffs, uh, today, they needed him to step up. He stepped up well. Everybody played well. Everybody took rhythm shots. Everybody played their role. Ibaka was big defensively with those four blocks. Uh, Gasol was very aggressive, you know, going at, you know, DeMarcus. And they played well. You know, they believed that they could win the championship, and they showed us tonight. And Lowry, not only was he big, but even after getting pushed by a fan, which everyone has seen that video by now, hopefully that guy not allowed back in the arena. Where, by the way, in this arena, they are chanting, let's go Raptors oh, Toronto is holding at it down. Oracle, which means oh, it's not over. that they, they are as it. excited no, no, as I'm no, no, no. sure. It's not over. I said with Toronto fans. Oh, I mean, deep deep While well, they argue the fans, on behind the listen to Coach Nurse, listen. who has no arguments after being up 2-1. to one. Say questions for coach. We've got the boom mics around the room. Please raise your hand. We'll take the first question in the back on um, four. Coach in the back, Arash Madani with Sportsnet. Danny Green said uh, before the finals, people would stop him in the street and say, keep shooting, keep shooting, keep shooting. He said, I'm going to keep shooting. What did you get from him as a shooter tonight? Well, I think, I think um, Danny's you know, buckets, I think, boosted our whole team's confidence because we're kind of used to most of the year relying on those. And I think, it, you know, when he banged a couple there and, and then he kind of kept it going, I think it was just a huge confidence boost all around. Over on the right side. Okay. <clears throat> Coach over here, uh, Dan Devine from The Ringer. Uh, I had a question. Um, Kyle Lowry, sort of a tough couple of games to start the series offensively with foul trouble. Did you have a sense that he was sort of going to be able to break out? And what did you see from him that led to his great performance tonight? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I had a little talk with him before the game. And, and um, his, his kind of comments to me was he was going to let it rip tonight. So that was that was good. You saw him aggressive in transition, but but again, usually when he's when he's going good, it, it means he's hitting the paint. He's he's attacking off the screen and roll and and really getting downhill. That's usually a sign that he's got a lot of his offensive game and confidence going. <clears throat> Steve in the back. Obviously, a big night for the Raptors. Their fans here singing "Oh Canada" while Coach Nurse Stop it. is talking. Hey, listen, and they're deep in here. Hey, hey, hey look, hey, listen. Shaq, at least let hey, the fans the front North run. They, they know it could be over next week. If they know got, it could be listen, over the second. If I got a wolf in the backyard, he's not trying to do nothing. Leave him alone. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they don't know where they're not. These people don't, don't know. Hey, yeah, yeah, them. Okay, hey this is their first. Yeah, this is I, their I, first I, experience. What they don't know. can do. Stop it. Be quiet. As long as they look, the hamstring situation we don't know about for Game Four. We do know this. Hamstrung or not, the, the performance of Steph Curry, let's get into the history of it. Because you look at the numbers here, guys. 45 points, five boards, five assists in a finals game. I mean, that's an impressive look. We're talking about you know, and the logo, you know, Barry, Iverson, James. I mean, that's, over time. that is an impressive Ooh, that list. And Webb, how surprised were you in some 
points of this game, how much freedom Steph seemed to find, both with help of his teammates in the offense to get shots and also with his tenacity of getting into the paint. The great thing about Steph is he doesn't settle, so you always have to be on guard. So he's going to walk into a three like that. Of course, the defense can be better. You should get up. But at the same time, what do you do right here knowing that he's a great passer? As soon as you think about him, what happens? He gets the ball up. Now, Siakam doesn't stay on the double team. He doesn't settle. And that's why when you look at teams that play just analytics, let's say Houston. Houston will miss 27 threes in a row. Curry will shoot a layup and not just the three. So he plays common sense with analytics, and that's why it's so hard to guard him. But even more, he's probably, well, AI is probably the smallest guy on that list. But when you think about what he does, what he did today without the help of the other players, man, it's, it's just a special game to watch. In watching this game, and for those of you at home, the biggest thing that hampered Shaq, this Warriors offense, which was not something that I think people thought before the game, the loss of Kevon Looney. Why? Because Boogie, after all those minutes in Game 2, running on adrenaline, kind of seemed to run into a bit of a wall. We're going to show and break down some of that video in a second. Steve Kerr seen his team rise above many challenges in the past. They're down 2-1 now in these finals. Third row on the fourth, fourth seed in. Oh, sorry, fourth row. Fourth row. Steve, Paul Antunes, ESPN Brazil. Uh, even though you lost, it seemed like in that fourth quarter, you guys were flying around, diving on loose balls, and um, just playing really, really hard. Uh, considering all the adversity you guys are going through here in the playoffs, um, how proud are you of your guys tonight? Oh, very proud. They, they, uh, they played really, really hard and uh, gave it everything they had and uh, just ran into a better team tonight. Toronto played an excellent game. Made big shots every time they needed to. We never could get over the hump every time we we fought back and kind of got it to six, seven, or eight, whatever it was. Uh, they made big shots, so um, they outplayed us. They deserved it. And um, uh, but I'm I'm very proud of our effort. And now we just got to bounce back and uh, hopefully uh, get back here in here Friday night. Hopefully get get a little healthier and you know, get some guys back. But we'll see we'll see how that goes. But main thing is you just got to play better. Is, is Steph's performance tonight uh, one of the best you've ever seen? Steph, Steph. Was, Steph was incredible. The stuff he does is uh, he does things that, honestly, I don't think anybody has ever done before. The way he plays the game, the way he uh, shoots it, and, and the combination of his ball handling and, and, uh, and shooting skills, uh, it's incredible to watch. He was amazing. Second row on your right. Coach Trista Crick, USA Today. You obviously want to err on the side of caution when it comes to injuries, but was there any of the mentality of lose the battle, win the war, as it relates to sitting clay tonight? Uh, well, the whole point was to not risk uh, a, a bigger injury that would keep him out of the rest of the series. So um, that, that was the, uh, the decision we made, and um, I feel very comfortable with it. Uh, never would have forgiven myself if uh, if I played him tonight and, and he had gotten hurt. Um, so you live with uh, the decision. You make a wise decision, the wisest one you can, then you live with it and you move forward. So uh, the good thing is Clay has done well the last two days. Now he's got another couple of days to heal. Hopefully he'll be out there Friday. Tim over here. Deep Tim Calcom, the athletic. D Coach the Kerr talking Clay, about the really performance there the from Steph Curry, who, by the way, had a finals high for him in the first quarter with 17 and a half with 25. But we talk about injuries and playing with injuries and adrenaline and a lot led to everything Boogie gave really everything he could, Shaq, in that 28 minutes in game two. But you could tell because there were a lot of plays where we were saying this watching it. If Looney's in the game, they're easy lobs, they're dunks. There were a number of missed layups. He ends up going one for seven from the floor. We're going to show some of the video, but you could tell there's no lift there for Cousins. Listen, he's had two major injuries on the same side, on the same leg, and uh, he battled. Uh, you know, he came back. Uh, he fought his way back. We thought he was done for the rest of the season. He's been working out two times a day, rehabbing. But you're right. He just didn't have that lift today. You know, usually when he gets around the basket back in his old Sacramento days, it was, a, you know, elbow, uh, drop, step, dunk. But today, you know, the little flip shots. And, you know, he wasn't getting the calls that he thought he deserved. But he didn't have a lot of lift tonight. Kenny, obviously you do the best that you can with it. 
Bogut, in terms of his minutes, uh, played 21. That ended up playing more than DeMarcus did in that second half. But without Looney, a guy who probably didn't get enough credit before what we saw in the last series, it's tough for them because that's really the, the, that's all they have other than a little bit of Jordan Bell we saw late in the game. Well, you know, they have three of their major guys who play major minutes between KD, Clay, and Looney, you know, before Cousins came back. Those are the three guys that were playing with Steph um, and, and Draymond. So, yes, it's a different basketball team. Uh, it's, a bit, it's a different emphasis. But the pace of the game changes, and it's not the same. So they're a little uncomfortable. They can't get into the same, as Shaq said, rhythm that they were in because they have to play slower and a little bit more deliberate. Um, but be that as it may, the one thing I said before the game is you're still going to have to score 110, 115 points to beat them. Toronto did tonight. Uh, Golden State, 109 points with everyone out of the game. You still have to score at a high clip. And no, speaking of scoring, I haven't them. seen this in a while. 30 points, 18 points, 17 points, 18 points, and 23 yeah. from the starting five. Yes. That's impressive. Yeah, very impressive. When you look at Clay Thompson, now you heard Steve Kerr say, and before the game, the report was likely or hoping to play game four, but it's a hamstring. So now we continue to monitor it, right, Webb, over here over the next couple of days. Even though I think everybody thought he would play tonight, or at least will play game four, we have to at least approach the opportunity of talking about what if he doesn't? play in game four so let me ask you based on what you saw tonight if there's no KD and no clay in game four even if it's just for one more game in the series how do the Warriors find a way to beat this Raptor team you got pretty much an all-time performance out of Steph and it still wasn't enough they won't if they don't have KD or Clay Thompson they can't win this series period that's I, just that's can just, they win a game I, 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 I don't know about the game but for the series, and we just talked about DeMarcus Cousins, who's battling back from an injury, and it's tough, and he hasn't played a while. Well, you know, it's unfair of us to think that he's going to score that much. It's unfair of us to say Siakam is going to have the game that he had in game one. And I think it's unfair to expect Klay Thompson, one of the best shooters this league has seen, to come and have 30 points in his team just, just win. He still has to recover from the game. Look, he still has heat on his Achilles. As Shaq just mentioned, that whole left side is being banged up. And so it's not so much that, oh, my God, they can't do it without him. This is the NBA. And, and you still have to have great players, even though this is a dynasty and, and a great team that we're watching. But without them, they're going to have to move the ball. They're going to have to find help from someone else. Livingston is going to have to knock down shots. But on the other end, how are they going to stop people when you have to have DeMarcus Cousins stopping somebody on the pick and roll knowing he's injured? What if you continue to go at Clay? So this team is good, and what's so fun about watching them is their ball movement. But it's going to be fun watching them figure out how to do it because without two great shooters, it'll be tough. Uh, I'll say this. I'm going to do a Charles. I guarantee Clay Thompson and Kevin Durant will and. be playing in game four. Guarantee. I, I think that that was the other reason why we can hold them back. Because now we're gonna have everyone for game four. And we're gonna go we're gonna go after the series starting on game four. And make it a three game series and go we're back gonna on go, the road. We're going after it on game four. And and the series starts then. Because if if he doesn't if KD doesn't come back for game four, it's no reason to come back at all, possibly. And so now everyone will be in the lineup for Golden State. I guarantee. And the keys for Toronto, you have to do the same thing you did today. Don't come in here with a two one lead, being cute, taking ill advised shots. Uh, you know, play great basketball, you, you know, play great defense. I kinda like that that Steph had forty seven. Because nobody else is doing anything. Now, if you got step 47 and, and, you know, somebody else 20, somebody else 15, then you get in trouble. They don't Listen, have a somebody else, look, though, right, Shaq? I mean, that's the problem. Yeah, no, they don't. I mean, you know, they got a bunch of guys that can give you, you know, uh, uh, 15 to 20 points. But this kid stepped up. You know, he lost his, his coveted spot as the, the one-two punch on the Toronto because, you know, he's been up and down. And, you know, Siakam has had a great playoff. So we kind of, you know, uh, gave him the – the two of the Toronto one-two punch. But, you know, if, if they got those three guys playing well, because, listen, Kawhi is always going to give you his, his quiet 30. It's, it's not a flashy 30. It's a nice, solid 30. So if he can get some help, and he got help from four guys tonight. So if he can get help from, 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 from four guys, 
Uh, they got a shot at winning, winning yeah, the, the championship. Yeah, the quietest 30. He got the quietest 30 I've ever seen yeah, in my life. I, I, like, it, was, it was just smooth. No dunks. No, yeah. No One flashy little, moves. No left-hand dunk, Six but nothing. Six seven yeah. rebounds. A couple of yeah, easy crazy. threes in yeah. transition yeah. in big spots, a, right? It was a very subtle 30 points. And we got big shots from Van Vliet. That continues to be a story. Hit that huge shot late. Uh, Steve Kerr did say, by the way, that moving forward, Boogie will be fine. So he is scheduled to be part of that mix in game four. Pascal Siakam has been such a huge part of the Raptors run. He'll join us there on set he live. Got DXL men's apparel. And Bang! it has been apparent the daggers continue to come from men's oh, and the surgeon. Van, Van Vliet, who has gotten everyone's attention. Spider chanting Fred on Twitter. Fred getting Fred. spoken to in the locker room after the game three win. Fred, you just took early lead. They made the rush and they were going to. How are you able to hold off better against the NBA? Uh, we just kept scoring. We on the ball. We knew that they were going to make a run. Uh, once we built ourselves, that was a lead. Just try to keep the team and uh, put pressure on them and, and uh, you know, just work in. We, we knew that you know they were down a couple guys, and, and obviously uh, the, the cash about us to just try to pull them out. But you got to just be one, one position at a time. And um, I thought we built a good lead from the first. They probably scored a little bit too much in the first 29 points, but uh, from there on, just try to keep, you know make, keep one each quarter. And I think we did that for the first second box. But, uh, just try to win each quarter. Take the win. It doesn't matter about two or, or two hundred at the point. I would guess that it's definitely easy. He's talking about the night when he goes out. I think he knew he was going to shoot from 30. How much upgrade did he get for you? Yeah, hey, that's what it is. If you, you know, these guys in this team are very hard to guard. It's one of them. I said that before the series started. Um, he's an elite offensive player and a top player of all time. So, um, we know what he brings to the table. We could have made it a little harder on him. Though we we had a lot of breakdowns to get one easy. We shoot about 14 free throws a game. That doesn't help. And um, we know he's going to make tough shots. So we got to be better on him. But we thought we were going to weather the storm a little bit. We knew he was going to come on fire and have to play right now. So uh, we did enough to get the win. And we got to look at the film and try to build on for Friday. Did you play back? Since that first two games against the Bucks, Van Vliet has been brilliant. The fans, speaking of twos, two wins away. Soggy, but still wonderful all at the same time outside of Union Station on Front Street, the North. They have wins nothing to do when they actually win. From they where they never. They already they celebrated. Did. You should have seen it after they won. Don't the celebrate line. too early. Hey, let me tell you. Well, first of all, they know how to celebrate up in T.O. as we know. I but have it's no been, idea what you're talking about. It's been, no, of course not. I wasn't referring to you. I was looking at Kenny. But there's I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> either. Shout out to Carlos Aboro. <laughs> shout out to Marble <laughs> Restaurant. No one's ever been outside. They were prepping in their hotel rooms. But from a standpoint, Shaq, we, we talk about covering this franchise. Fifth straight year here that we're here for the NBA Finals. Playing for a storied franchise, obviously, like the Lakers. But when you go back to your time in Miami and what it's like being a part of a franchise that's starting to do historic things and to kind of go places they haven't been. How about for the Raptors? A year after the Dwayne Casey decision, it was coach of the year, best season in their franchise history, to trade a franchise face in DeMar DeRozan. Who knows about Kawhi moving forward, but it all seems to have worked. You're two wins away. You know, it's worked. Uh, the general manager, what's his name? Because I can't pronounce it. Bob Myers? No, no. Uh, for uh, uh, Toronto. Messiah. Messiah, yeah, sure. Messiah took a big gamble. Uh, if it wouldn't have worked, I'm sure he would have had to been looking for a new job, but it's, it's worked out perfectly. Uh, Kawhi Leonard. Uh, second, third best player in the league is playing great. Uh, the town has embraced him, and you know he's always been a great leader. And you know everybody, you know just embraced him. And you know the others are stepping in nicely. You know I always go back to the you know 94, 95. But King was going to do his thing. But game one it was Kenny. Game two was Sam Cassell. Game three it was Clyde and Kenny. Game four it was somebody else. So the others for the Toronto Raptors, especially big wins.
Guys that you don't expect step up, they step up. And tonight, everybody stepped up. Kawhi had help from everybody. I haven't seen a stat line like this in a long time. And to be fair, mentioned Coach KC guys, they got scrutinized for the long rotation too much last year. But if Siakam Kenny doesn't play those minutes and Van Vliet doesn't play those minutes, then they're going through some of this for the first time. A lot of these guys did get a taste, get to go through playing big minutes late in the season into a postseason that they seem to really kind of be in that next step where they seem more comfortable and more poised? Well, the most comfortable part is, you know, Kawhi Leonard is a great player. But what he, what he also does, he puts everyone in their natural position. So now, Kyle Lowry doesn't have to always be the primary ball handler. He can run off screens and wait. You know, Ibaka doesn't have to be the primary poke guy or when Gasol comes. So everyone's in their correct position and have their superpowers. And so now they look a better basketball team. I'll tell you what, this basketball team trying to put together a special run of three straight titles in the last ride Oracle. They've been challenged before. This is a new challenge altogether for Draymond and the Dubs. Draymond, John Dinson, 95-7. The game, a lot of the conversation coming out of this one will be that, that you guys may be sacrificed tonight in some sense to be healthy for the next four games if it goes that far. Do you view it that way, one, and how comfortable are you having to win three of the next four, assuming you guys do get healthier on Friday night? Um, I don't I don't view the sacrificing. Uh, we went out there and played hard, and we lost. Uh, you know, we didn't go in the game thinking we're not going to play Clay or Kevin or Loon or anybody else. And we're just going to get this game away. Should they they play well? They knocked down, I think, 17 threes. You got to give them credit. But we didn't sacrifice. You don't sacrifice a finals game to be healthy for the next one. Anything can happen. But at the same time, you do have to be smart. You know, we would much rather have Clay for the rest of the series than putting them out there and lose them and then nothing. So, nah, uh, no sacrifice the game. Thank you. Mark in the third row. Draymond, Mark Schwartz, ESPN. Kyle Lowry um, really kind of seemed to turn it on to a new gear tonight. Um, what kind of tone do you think he set for the team, and, and how different was his performance in this game than earlier in the series? Well, I think he made more shots than he's made. Um, you know, obviously he was way more aggressive uh, than he's been, but he made shots. Over here. Hey, Draymond, Cameron Buford, LA News Observer. Um, can you talk about how you guys combat their size and length advantage that is here to seem to impact the game tonight? Uh, we we got to be more solid with the ball, and it starts with me. Um, you know, I've had a bunch of turnovers, and I think every game this series, so got to just take, you know, be more cautious with our passes. Um, you know, I think, you know, they they do have a lot of length, but you know, we got to play in more space and not, you know, play in a crowd. Raj in the back. Draymond in the back, Arash Madani with Sportsnet. Just how depleted does this situation become when Clay's out, when Looney's out, when KD's out, when DeMarcus is banged up? Just just how difficult is it without everybody? I mean, it's, it's more difficult than with them. Um, you know, I think that goes without Sam. Nonetheless, we got guys that can step up, and you know, we just didn't play well enough tonight. So it is what it is. Right here next. You get him in the middle. Go ahead. C.J. Peterson, San Francisco Examiner. Draymond, obviously the, you know, absence of Clay and obviously Durant been, you know, played a lot. But how big is missing Con Looney as well? He kind of threw off the center rotations a little bit. You guys played Andrew Bogut over 20 minutes tonight. How big was not having Kavana there? I think Bogut played great uh, his minutes. Um, you know, but, you know, obviously Looney is – been great for us all year. So, you know, not having him out there definitely makes a difference. Um, you know, not having anyone uh, makes a difference because everyone, you know, when you assemble the team, everyone brings something different. So, you know, but no one, you know, no one cared that guys hurt. Everybody wants to see us lose. So I'm sure people are happy to hurt. We just got to continue the battle and win the next game, go back to Toronto. Win game five, come back to Oracle, win game six, and then celebrate. Fun times ahead.
Right here in a second. All right, the suit saying of Draymond Green into the sayings about shoes. Uh, your shoe selection tonight. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Jack shoes. Are, so, first are those of all, the Wolverine? Oh, first, 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 first of all, don't ever disrespect Bruce from Freeman's. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I've been Bruce since 1989. Freeman's Stop fantastic. It. I, I'm not wearing German clogs. Oh, man. <laughs> Shut your face. Those are not Pokio shoes, yes, ladies and gentlemen. These are Bruce Freeman special. Thank you, Bruce and Brett. No more. Those are fire. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Hey, feet <laughs> <laughs> That's that feet work. Is right that there. the kind of footwork you're talking about? The rhythm at the club that you were uh, explaining? I, I haven't been to a club in 10 uh, years. Meanwhile, we hey, will. Snitches get stitches, man. <laughs> don't, don't worry about what I be doing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to Pascal Siakam, Toronto, two wins away. with YouTube TV. Try it now. We continue game time live at the Files here at Oracle presented by YouTube TV. Get him. The Raps have nine and two the postseason with that man shoots 50 plus from the field. Didn't die again tonight with 18. Of course, had the huge game one. Now Pascal Sackham joins us. First of all, congrats on the win. Thank you. thank you, thank you. I know work's not done, but try and kind of describe the feeling Taking a win on this floor, knowing how difficult that is, now being just two wins away from the goal. Um, I think it was a big step for us. Um, we, we obviously we know the arena and, and you know what they've, they've, they've been able to build here. Um, just being coming here and, and having get a win it, um, it is definitely you know shows the character of our team, and we want to just continue to get better. And um, we have obviously an opportunity to get another one um, the next game, so um, we kind of focus ourselves on, on the next game. You know, uh, it's, when you talk about focus, I was just going to ask you, like, you so much focus about Clay. And whether I'm just curious, when did you guys find out officially that he would play? And how much discussion was there in the room last couple of days about game plan, if he's on the floor, if he's not? Because you hear all the noise outside, obviously a lot of attention paid to it. Um, I don't I'm thinking we kind of like, we didn't, we didn't really care at the end of the day, you know. Um, we kind of expected that he was going to play. Um, so uh, that's kind of how we, we prepared and, and you know, uh, like a couple of minutes before game, I guess we, we knew he wasn't. But um, it didn't matter, we prepared like he was going to play. Uh, Pascal, uh, welcome. Let me greet you Thank properly. You. Say bon, bonjour. Bon, bonjour. Uh, <laughs> as a young player, we don't have How a terrible is that? Bonjour. That was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bonjour. Say bon. Say bon. Say bon. Say bon. Yeah. 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 Like Hold on. First of all, don't check my I'm, friends. I'm asking you. I'm trying to learn. <laughs> Tony Parker and Bruce D.R. taught me that word. Uh, say uh, bon. That was good. That was good. As a young player, when you don't play well, how does that affect your confidence? And what do you say to yourself to get back going? Right. Um. It's definitely tough. Think. Having leaders on our team like Betts, uh, like Mark, um, Kawhi, Kyle, they always try to you know talk to me because I'm kind of hard on myself just knowing how hard I work. Uh, but um, just having those guys always you know keep me calm and, and, and knowing that you know it, it happens and you got to move on. Um, I think that's kind of like the mentality that I had today, just, just moving on and you know just knowing that I have you know, I have the, the, the ability and, and I just got to go out and do that. <laughs> oh, let, let, just, uh, let me ask you this: you know we know how hard you work. Uh, your story has, has been out there and, and it's very inspiring actually about your story and growing up and, and meeting the Bacchus. First of all, thank you for encouraging everybody. Yep. Second, when you go, when you went into last summer, what did you say to yourself that you had to work on and why did you say that? Because right. we see the fruit of your labor right now. Right. Um, I think, you know, the first thing I did, you know, coming to the summer is knowing that I couldn't be on the floor if I couldn't stretch the floor, like I couldn't shoot the ball. Like it's the first thing from the, the night, you know, we lost, that was my first thing, going to the gym, talking to the nurse and, and all the, the coaching staff. Just got to improve my shooting, um, finding a way to, to, to be a threat out there, you know, on the three-point line. And then from there, just, you know, ball handling. I, I knew I had an opportunity to be out there and have the ball and handle the ball, um, making plays for others. I think, you know, what, it started with a jump shot and then, you know, went back. You know, my man Rico Hines, I always give him a shout out. We go out there and you just, just put the work in and, and working on moving the ball, being able to handle handle and, and kind of being a threat offensive. You know what, you know, we, we, this is your first finals experience and I, I, I want to kind of change gears a little bit. I think my, the first time I was in the finals, the experience of media day on mm -hmm. day one with 200 media right. people and they had a rotation every five minutes they rotated. What's been the experience of the first final experience that says, man, this is a little different. Right. From the regular, even the playoffs. Yep, yep. I never knew, like, I didn't know how crazy it was, you know, until that first media day we had. Um, 
I, it's kind of like eye-opening, just just knowing that whole world is looking at you and everyone is just watching and paying attention. Um, but at the same time, is it fun going home like tonight? And typically, you would go home and go, okay, let me go see what my man did over in in Denver right. or somebody. That, right. And you're the only game on TV. <laughs> right, right. It's crazy. It's crazy. Everyone is watching you. Um, you know, it's it's um, it's definitely something that I'm learning and 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 I'm, and I'm getting better at just understanding the outside noise and and, and keeping you know. Um, my composure and having you know a team spirit. Yeah, I want to settle a debate because we had talked before about Ishek, obviously, whose rookie was Danny Green. This is just a couple of years ago. Mm. Obviously, how long ago, Jack? I have no yeah, idea. it's a long time ago. Um, I look good though. But we, but we, t we talked about a conversation <laughs> was had in pregame that may have spurred the game tonight. But somebody on Twitter jumped in and said that that's not correct. Now, I don't know if this is you. He says that <laughs> Pascal, that this is you who hit Danny Green. <laughs> That was me. That was. Was me. it you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you trying to do it? No. <laughs> okay. So I'm thinking we're shooting 15 shots, but it was only 10. So I'm, I'm I keep firing the passes, and he wasn't looking. You know, it was bad. I kind of woke down. him up. And and they said, you know, after that he started shooting the ball well, so I helped him out. <laughs> All the people that, that didn't see me greet you, I'm gonna greet you again. Say bon bonjour. Oh, bonjour, merci, uh, bonjour. You know, at, on <laughs> TNT. Dude, I deal with all the time, man. Dude, it's like he's only got, you know, the, you you like he has like nine degrees, but he only knows like a little bit of everything. <laughs> so he just goes on like us. Like, that's 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 the that he he, he knows how to speak French. He does not know how to speak French. He's going to another language already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. Oh, 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 that's awesome. On TNT, Kenny, Chuck, and myself, we unanimously said that you are the new two of the one-two punch. At what point in the season did you say, okay, I'm not a young player anymore. I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to be the, the second go-to guy for this team. Um, I think coming into the season, you know, I always had the entire then and then having the minutes and, and being on the floor. Um, I think there was one point in Phoenix where, you know, I had like a bad game and then, at the end of the game, coach gave me the ball, you know, to, to, to end the game. So, you know, just just having that confidence, knowing that, you know, your teammates trust you and, and the coaches, you know, they believe in your work. And, and um, so that, that definitely boosts your confidence. And, and at that point, it was just, you know, continue to do what I do. And, and when my teammates are around, I encourage me to do it. You know, I just feel confident to do it. I want to ask you one more before we let you run, because we were mentioning, and we could call it Kawhi instead of Kawhi, but he, he, Kawhi even scores third points. It's like he, he kind of like he just does it in the flow. He said before the game, even though last time he was in this building, he got Zaza and he doesn't even remember it or think about it. Can you take us inside? How different is he, the teammate, than what we see from the outside? Give us kind of an idea and a feel of what Kawhi been like from a leadership perspective. Um, I think he's been awesome, man. Um, just I think we all have that perception of him or, or who he's supposed to be. And until you know you, you out there and, and hang out with him every single day, you know you know he's a great dude. Um, he's about his business. He had his family and. And you know that's what it's about. And um, coming every day, making jokes, and, and having fun with guys on the plane. Um, he's always been, you know, the, that guy that you can look at when something's going bad. And he's always has that calm demeanor, and, and just it, it, it gives you kind of like a like a you know the peace, and, and just just out there and knowing that it's going to be okay. I, I kind of feel like that every time on the floor with him. So um, he's definitely a great leader for us, and, and having him's been, been awesome. You want to say goodbye in French? Uh, much or more to you. That means much, much love. love. Much, much, love. much love. more. Much love. Much love. Much love. Much love. First of all, don't have uh, Google, nah, baby. Google. Yeah, Google. 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 Kyle Mark Schwartz, ESPN. Um, Nick shared with us earlier that uh, he talked to you before the game, and uh, there's a sign on the board that said, let it rip. Um, tell me what that meant to you and how you think you let it rip tonight compared to how you played the first two. Um, I think that was a, more of a, a message for the team. Um, we shot 38 threes in that, and, um, you know, we got up a lot, a lot of threes, a lot of attempts, and um, just played play basketball. For me, it was just coming off being aggressive and um, – you know, not not you know, not 
so being passive and trying to get everybody else involved and more so get myself going and um, you know let everybody else feed off of that. Michael Middle. Kyle, Michael Grange from uh, Sportsnet. I mean, when you found out that Clay wasn't playing, did, did it really feel like this was an opportunity you guys had to try and take advantage of tonight? Was there that added urgency? Obviously, you want to win every game, but yeah, I mean, you know, when you lose a, a, an All NBA type basketball player in Clay and Clay and All Star, um, it definitely you know it changes their team. But I mean, Steph had an unbelievable game. You know, like 47 points is, is pretty. Uh, pretty impressive, um, but you know we just went out there and did our job, and you know I think we, we held them to forty percent shooting. Um, you know we played well, we finished the game, and we found a way to win a basketball game. Standing all the way in the back. Well, the thirty assists, fourteen turnovers, part of that, and fortunately couldn't turn that hamstring back to where did Clay doesn't play KD. The pep talk, but no playing either, and neither is Kawhi and his teammates. Early in game number three, wraps off the good start. Kawhi Webb aggressive off glass, the putback. And that's what you want from Kawhi, to be aggressive early. But when Siakam missed mismatches that he wanted to, he took advantage. And that's what, what you love, the pace in which they played with. And Siakam's such a big part of that. Yeah, strange six straight game down double digits in the first half. And more, Kenny, from Kawhi at Kawhi. Well, the ability oh. to take people off the dribble. That was his most exciting play tonight, Shaq. But uh, to pick, <laughs> take people off the dribble, to pick in the post, mid-range, and three. But then Steph Curry was just fabulous all night long. 17 in the first quarter, Kenny, the most that he's had in a finals. First oh. quarter, 25 and a half that the most he's had. With that much responsibility, that much responsibility oh, boy. lots of power. Bang. Boy. And found a way to get freedom, was aggressive. Teammates did a good job. Got freed up for more shots than you might have thought. Team was down at the break just eight, but the Raptors caught firing. And you talked about Shaq Lowry event. Fleet, those others came into effect in the third. And right here, you have great ball movement. You know, guys are holding the ball, you know, taking shots in rhythm. You know, when you get, uh, you know, pass the ball to you know, your teammate, make sure you give it to him in rhythm. Danny Green, I told to leave it. You know, he had a great game. He's feeling it. And Toronto played a hell of a game. Oh, give me that. Oh, give me that. Two you things you never thought. Hustling. Three point uh, advice and such, uh, speaking of Mr. Shaq in one night. Both worked. Nice look from Kawhi. Danny Green over Cook. And a lot of those threes. I don't like that shot. He didn't look Yeah, but a lot of those threes were coming. The shot clock running down. And he didn't have time to realize, oh, I missed maybe a couple in the previous games. He shot the basketball. In okay, rhythm. Danny. You're going to get on back on the defense. Okay. And this is what you got to like. And the fact, again, I don't think we can say enough about. Kyle Lowry and his presence in the game, getting guys and getting shot, but six guys in double fitters for Toronto, like Shaq said, you're not going to, you don't see that often. And Webb, even though, and he rightfully so, Steph will get a lot of credit for that fight that he showed, Baca, we had the chase down block you saw from Dan Green, a big block late from Siakam as well, defensively they did their best, Boogie didn't feel his best, Steph. And the Warriors continuing to try and hang in Draymond for a three, which cut the lead at the time to 14. It's now 12 with two and a half to go. And more from Draymond. Aggressive inside. The shots weren't working early, Webb. Seems like second half, Draymond to take it inside, take it to the back. Well, yeah, that, and that's what you want to do. Play the percentage, play the numbers. Make guys don't normally shoot three, shoot threes, and hopefully you get a little bit of luck like that. Van Vliet, shout out to his... Newborn child is giving him all this feel from outside, but yeah, you the want the guys the to ball? shoot and there follow. Is. You know, the percentages, play the percentages. Kenny, did you think when you look go back last series, you guys are sitting there first two games, and a Brogdon had outscored the entire Raptors pitch through the first two games, that they'd bounce back the last few games last series in this as well as they have? Well, you knew they're capable, uh, just weren't able to, you know, put things into play. And, you know, a light switch turned on. And, um, but they have been capable of doing this. This is what we expected out of out of their bench and, and Van Vliet throughout the season. We have seen this in, at times when Kyle Lowry, even last year, wasn't playing up the par. He would finish games. So this is not new to us. It's just it was it's new to him recently to come back in this in this kind of environment and do it. And it's just great to see guys playing at their best at the best time. And this is why we love competition so much because every game is an if.
Now, you, you know, when you get to this level, it's always about if the others can play well or if the superstars can have a monster game. If a guy who hasn't been shooting shooting well starts to, you know, you know, find his stroke. And, you know, the other for Toronto, they play excellent basketball today in a tough building, and they're up to one. But they can't get too happy because Golden State is battle tested, and when you book that bear, they usually wake up. Speaking of ifs, what if we can get the video of Kawhi telling those jokes on the plane? I, I personally would love anybody buying that. I would love to see those. Kawhi had 30 points in the game, 10 of 11 from the line, hit two big threes in the third quarter. Here he is after the win to put him up 2-1. Uh, it feels good. I mean, I don't think about what happened two years ago. Um, Pretty much living in the now, and I'm just happy we were able to get a game three win, another step closer to our goal. ESPN, why was "Let It Rip" just the right message tonight for you guys on the whiteboard? And who wrote it? And how well did Kyle Lowry follow that advice? I, I think we all kind of follow that advice, but it's easier to. Uh, Look at that now and say it worked great for us, you know, especially on a great shooting night. Um, but you know, it's, it's been a while since the whole playoff series. We haven't really had a good game shooting night, and I knew eventually at some point we'd do for one. So luckily, we got you know one tonight where we still have to do a better job defensively on the floor. Uh, Many of those guys are, are better, so we don't have to rely on our offense or our shooting to win games for us. But you know, luckily, we did tonight. Uh, and, and hopefully next game we can continue to stay you know, warm and let it rip and hopefully play better defense. Steve on the aisle over here. Uh, Steve Ashburner, NBA.com. Uh, Danny, um, over here. I see you. Shaquille O'Neal um, <laughs> apparently offered some shooting advice to you. Um, He's a pure shooter. I don't know if you guys knew that. Yeah. Or <laughs> can, can you fill us in on, on what he suggested and what effect it had on, on your performance tonight? Yeah, I spoke to him before the game briefly. Um, you know, he was always on the, the TNT set, um, and he was out there before the game. And every time I see him, you know, he's giving me his pure shooting advice, um, you know, because he was, he was good at it. And, uh, but, you know, just the, the, the fundamentals, the small things, you know, he's telling me to be confident and just, you know, hold the follow through. And, um, you know, obviously, after a good shooting night, it's easy to, to see that his advice has worked. But, um, you know, his, he always just yells to me, you know, leave it. And that, that's his way of saying, you know, leave your hand up there, hold your follow through, and be confident in your shot. But, um, you know, he's always been that, that guy to me everywhere or every year that we get on the playoffs or on the stage. We, you know, he comes over and, and, you know, tells me, you know, stay confident and, you know, give me shooting advice. Standing in that right. Listen, I play with Chris Jackson, a.k.a. Mahmoud Abdul Rauf, Maurice Williamson. Uh, Doug Sandberg in high school, Joe Cavalier, D. Scott. I always go back to the first finals we lost when, you know, Kenny was just throwing it up there, leaving it, looking at our bench, talking to like play. The greatest shooters leave it. And I've never been a shooter like that, but I played with guys. And I used to always tell them to leave it, and it always worked. And, again, Danny was my rookie. And, you know, when I got to Cleveland, it was, it was toward the end of my career. LeBron is a great leader. You know, he always did his thing. But... You know, and he would, wouldn't do certain things, and I would, you know, pick up like, like, you know, Danny was, was, was there for me. We were both new, and I would say, okay, listen, you're not going to stop LeBron, but when he's out there running around doing that, you can work on your game also. So you're a shooter, that's why we brought you here, so just leave it. And, you know, it was interesting because, yeah, he's talking about, hey, you know, jokingly about shooting advice, but really what he needed more than anything is some smelling sauce. So... What Shaq did was put the smelling salt because it's different when you hear it on television. It's different when you hear it from the stands. But when your peers and someone you look up to grabs you and shakes you and say, yo, I'm paying attention to what you're doing, man, and that's not you. You know, and you get that smelling salt, sauce, whatever it is, you get it on. That's what you did to him. You, yeah. you, you, you can't take credit for all of it, but every now and then you need someone to bring you back to where you are and in that moment and, and I, I still honestly I didn't notice it until Chris noticed Chris said, now look at the difference the way he's warming up because she told him he said I don't like I, I don't even want to 
It's a family show. It's a yeah, family show. No, no, show. I like that This is TNT. But I, don't even, but I don't even mean like the way you said it, but it wasn't even so much Shaq telling him to leave it. What I took from the conversation was, exactly. hey, man, you, you were done. He was on the other end practicing. And I looked at Kenny. I'm like, he's down there like, he's lazy. Joking around. He's exactly. joking around. And Shaq came over here like, man, it's time to go. And that's what you need. Like, I don't care if Shaq made one or a thousand shots. Shaq basically said to him, you know how we do. You playing around. That's he was playing he was with doing. Exactly. That's what they that's need what to be doing now. Yeah, he ain't got all night. And so what I think it was more than Shaq saying, leave and shoot it, which he did. It all was that, him saying, get prepared. Quit playing around. You, you got a big game to play. And I think... Those things matter a lot. I saw Shaq put batteries in a lot of guys' back. <laughs> and, um, no, it worked. Well, give me some names. Man. <laughs> no, I ain't doing that, man. You like that fire? Hey, you talking about, I ain't talking about nobody. I know you ain't talking about some Marky Walker. Are we bringing up some Marky Walker? I know you ain't talking about Mark Madsen. Coach Mark Madsen, what up, Coach? I'm going to add, can I have one more thing? We have time for Yeah, it? yeah, sure. Because we'll this do. happened to me once. I was having a great game, and one of my favorite groups of all time was Bell Biv DeVoe. And Mike Bivens is a big basketball fan. Oh, he was fan. smooth, yeah, yeah. And yeah, so it's ha I, I had like maybe 19 points at halftime. And so now I come out, and it's a game that's on national television, and I see Mike Bivens. And I'm like, oh, he's waving. And I'm, of course, I'm a ghost. Yeah. Up. And one of my friends came up to me after. He's like, you never do that. What are you doing? Get back on the court. He ran from the other side, and I woke and put the smell of salt back yeah, on me. Yeah. Like, I don't do that. Yeah. So it takes you out of mental focus. So what Danny Green is a great player, been on championship team, but he was out of no focus. And we, I don't know if Shaq did it, but I sure know it did not hurt him, what Shaq said. I know it helped him in uh, some way. I wish I could tell him better what I really said, but <laughs> I can't. Well, what you the said it, Shaq, I promise you I said Kenny. I said, you're going to have a big game tonight. He said, he said it, and I said, no, nah, not just for it. He said, I'm putting Barbie on Danny Green tonight to have the game tonight. What, what what, why don't you say it in French? That's what I said. It was an unfortunate situation here. This video is circulated, rightfully so, in social media. A fan explicably, visibly pushing Kyle Lowry. When he came back in complaining, I think a lot of people thought maybe that it was because of a foul call and eventually realized it was because of this fan. And then at the podium, clearly, for good reason, Kyle Lowry was asked about the incident with the fan here at Oracle. Um, as for that fan, there's no place in him for that. You know, he had no reason to touch me. He had no reason to reach over two seats and then say some vulgar language to me. There's no place for people like that in, in our league. And, um, you know, hopefully he never goes, comes back to the NBA game. Go ahead on the right side. Yeah. I believe uh, he was escorted let, out. I did see a let video where they escorted him out. Let me go first because there's two answers. Kyle is absolutely right. There's no place for that. And the other answer is, it wasn't a push, push, push. It was, it, it, it was a touch, but it wasn't a push. You want to go push? Remember Ron Artest and, and Pistons? That we, we don't need stuff like that. But Kyle's absolutely right. I mean, fan, listen, you know, the fans do what they do. They say what they say. Stopping the fans from saying what they're going to say, that's never going to happen in any sport in any arena. So we can cancel trying to, you know, get fans to be quiet. This is what they do. Let me do something. My man down there, he knows in Sacramento, they said stuff I can't repeat on TV. But as a player, that's what I want. I want to make you shut the hell up. I mean, again, Kyle Lowry's right. We don't need stuff like that. But again, from you know, from a from a guy that's the, that's a bully, I'm not worried about no push like that. I'm just gonna look at you and go okay, and then just come out and shoot a three, and then look at you and then blow a kiss to your wife. That's that's what I would do. I'm not, I'm not gonna complain about because guess what's gonna happen now? It's gonna go viral, and it's gonna be the focal point for the next two days.
And we to, don't want to be the focal point. To be point. fair, only somebody completely insane would push you if you jumped yeah, in the Yeah, I mean, I've been pushed <laughs> Sacramento. <laughs> to be <laughs> fair, I don't know if fan is touching oh, you. He was about to get beat at the bus one time <laughs> by <laughs> a bunch of people. Oh, I ain't going to say that. Oh, 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 who that was, though? Let me say it. Do we tell. Smocky <laughs> Walker again? No. <laughs> we had a fight one time with Sacramento, <laughs> Doug and, and Rick, and then it, it spilled in the back, and I'm fighting with security. I'm fighting with Roddy. Somebody hit me with a Louis Vuitton purse. I ain't gonna say no name, Jackie Christie. <laughs> she, was, she was eating him up. The only, Jack was fighting the dudes. Yes. Jack throwing punches. And then he was going, ow, ow, ow. So, so I don't know what that got to do with so, Go ahead, voice of, reason. Bun, 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 voice of reason. Voice of reason, yes. See, yes. Rab coming in the back. He, my man, we like gonna fight. So we do like this fake tussle. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he was from there. Jackie Christie just whooped your ass. <laughs> 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 I, I agree. I will say this. The arrogance and the ignorance of that fan to think that he, that Cal Lowry shouldn't evade his space. <laughs> that, that was the, that was the, that's what I got out of it more than anything. The arrogance and the ignorance of it. Like, what are you doing over here when you're here watching the game is just appalling. And so I agree with Kyle on that part. I understand what Jack's saying for sure. You know, don't, Jackie Christie hit you, did hit you in the head with the purse. But you know, this, <laughs> and he noticed he it having a Louis purse. This, but that, that, a nice that was, purse too. That was, that was arrogant, dollar purse. Arrogant <laughs> and ignorance at its <laughs> premier display right there. And to be fair, most fans, I'm sure the three of you have encountered normally, especially down in that area, handle themselves well. And you got to fall into the stands. And even in opposing arenas, they're not going to treat you that way. But that's the thing about a game that I love so much and I appreciate is that this is the only sport. Uh, you can say hockey, but there's a glass dividing. This is the only sport where you can walk behind the bench and hear what the coach is saying to a team, where you could be that close. And so I, like many fans, we relish in that. We relish in, oh, my bad, I'm sorry I got beer in your suit. I send them some food over or, or whatever. But the fact that that fan came over for two two seats and Kenny said the arrogance, it was almost like he wanted something with it. You know, he was uncontrollable with his energy. And, and you, you just don't like seeing that. But, but again, as well, you see that clip again? I would have turned that down and talk about it because Shaq is right about this. You just don't want to give the other team something to talk about or to take well, over. I thought it yeah, Kyle yeah, 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 I, yeah, I think so, right. but I think also he could have been, you question. know, hopefully he got kicked out and I'll okay. keep moving, you know. Because watch how the guy all of a sudden, and I think the other angle is a little bit better, but he tries to come over and he makes it his business. Look at this. He's not even in it. Like, you, you make like, it your business. Yeah, over like, here. get over. What are you Even doing? the lady next to him tries to stop it. Like, come on, That's not what he was doing. What was he doing? I mean, because his wife was a beautiful lady. He's like, hey, man, get away from my wife. She don't want your phone number. She don't want your Instagram. Get your ass up out of here now. <laughs> Out of control. He's out of control. You're out of control. Excuse me, C. Webb. Could you tap that girl for me? I would say something in French to save all this, but I don't think it's savable. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, Listen, just similarly, Steph Curry tried to save a situation without playing with Clay Thompson. 47 points. Historic performance here. He is at the podium. First question here in the third row. Hey, Steph. Uh, congratulations on your career high in the playoffs. My question for you is you played a hundred, over 100 games without Clay or 100 games with Clay. Talk to us about not having him tonight and kind of how that impacted the game. I mean, any injury in the playoffs is tough, uh, but especially a guy like Clay who's been so durable his whole you know, career and especially in the playoffs and uh, the way he's been playing as of late. So. You know, it's no secret that we're um, a little injury plague now, and and you know, guys, you know, trying to just find a way back to the court. But uh, you know, the, the moment is now. You, you got to try to have next man up mentality, like we always say, and just go out and fight. Uh, we did that tonight. We played better, obviously, better on the defensive end. Um, but I like. The competitiveness that we had, um, understanding you know we're missing 50 points pretty much between Katie and Clay, so um, we'll we'll adjust and 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 it's a long series, you know it's it's, it's going to be it's going to be fun for us. As of now, as of now, do you expect to see them or have them back on Friday? I mean, I'm not sure. Uh, that process takes care of itself when you know with the work that they're putting in, our training stuff, and all that. 
Janie, all the way in the back. Hi, Steph. Janie McCauley from AP. Um, each time you, you had a big shot, it seemed like they, they found an answer every time from, from multiple guys. Um, how difficult was that? I mean, they just they came down and hit big shot after big shot. Yeah, they played well the whole game. Like you said, every time we made a run or got the crowd into it, they either made a tough three or there was a tough you know foul call and slowed the tempo down or something went their way. So, uh, you know, it's just how it goes sometimes. Um, you have to tip the cap to you know all the guys made you know pivotal plays in, in the right times. I think defensively in the first quarter we can get off to a better start to hopefully take a little bit of rhythm away. I think we it was you know giving up 36 in the first quarter is tough, especially you know with, uh, with our, and a couple of guys down on our end. So we got to correct that for game four. But um, like you said, they they play well. Um, they deserve to win tonight. And the Guardian, uh, Steve Kerr told us before the game tonight that Clay was desperate to get on court. What was his reaction when the training staff told him that he couldn't play? What, what was uh, what was that like to witness? I didn't see it actually, um, so I don't really really know if there were any fireworks or anything like that. But you know, Clay was like you said, he was giving it everything he had to to, to be out there tonight. Um, I think wisdom prevailed in terms of this is a potentially seven game series and uh, you'd like to you know take advantage of tonight but his his overall health is important in terms of you know not taking away the rest of his you know of the series uh, with some catastrophic happening so hopefully he's back for game four Phil Roman right hey Steph Phil Barber Santa Rosa press Democrat with clay out it looked like you were pretty aggressive right from the start. Did you have a little extra sense of urgency in terms of scoring as opposed to times when maybe you would distribute if you had all your pieces on the floor? For sure. <laughs> um, yeah. I'll, I'll ask a, a, a follow-up. It looked like uh, they had very physical defense against you. I know you're used to that, especially in the playoffs. Anything different? that they were doing, were they any uh, more physical than you're accustomed to? Not really. Um, you know, after the two games, you start to get a feel of what, what's available. Um, on that end of the floor, just trying to make the right reads. And, you know, for the most part, we, not even myself, just uh, we were aggressive getting into the paint and swinging the ball. We were a little rushed early, but, we were just trying to create good offense, and you know, I think this is the third game in a row we scored 109. It's just a matter of our defense, um, and we can't fall into the trap of thinking, you know, offense alone is going to win win us, you know, another championship, um, or letting that end of the floor affect our defense, and. That'll be the biggest adjustment for a game four uh, all across the board. In the center? CJ Pearson, San Francisco Examiner. Right back here. Steph, right here. <laughs> In game two, you guys got a pretty, you know, breakout, a good breakout game from DeMarcus. Um, but tonight, you kind of seem to have a little bit of regression. Uh, kind of got exploited defensively in the block. Uh, only was one for seven from the floor. What did you see from his game? And what do you see, what would you like to see him do differently moving forward in game four and beyond? There's nothing different he should do. Just continue to play with confidence, and you know it was it was a rough go in terms of when he had the ball in his hands. There were some some calls that you know were a little iffy, honestly, in terms of um, him being aggressive in the paint and and not being able to finish for a lot of different reasons. Defensively, um, it's all five guys uh, being on a string, and you know. That's that's something we pride ourselves on. One guy, two guys aren't gonna, you know, do the job by themselves, and and we can help cover each other. So, like any great player, you know, if you have a rough game, you know, that resiliency to bounce back and and the confidence to know that you can still go out there and impact the game, um, that's not something that he'll he'll bring, and and we all will follow suit for sure. Mark here in the front. This stuff, uh, Mark McGee Bear in his group. Not only did you have a lot of points tonight, but it looked like you were involved with a lot of hustle plays. I was wondering if you could take us through your approach with that. 
Just competitiveness and trying to play to the to the butter. Um, it's, the, it's the finals, whatever you, you try to do to, to win the game. So um, nothing special, to be honest. It's just trying to make the right play. You know, give everything you got. Sacrifice your body when you have the, when you have the opportunity. Um, there are guys on our team to do that on a nightly basis. Tonight just happened to be in a losing effort, so um, got to keep that same mentality and and just play a full 48 like we like we're accustomed to doing. Do last three in the back corner, Mark, and then over here, Josh Lewenberg, TSN. Steph, you, you saw love Fred Van Vliet in the second half tonight, as well as in the series and in the regular season meeting. What does he do defensively to challenge you? Um, I mean, he's consistent. He he. They usually try to, you know, have him press up full court, try to make me work. Um, I just try to, you know, make the simple decision, continue to, you know, try to get downhill and paint. And and honestly, they, <clears throat> the way that they load their defense, you know, in transition sometimes and or even in the half court, he knows he has help behind him so he can be a lot more aggressive on the ball. And they give him the freedom to, to do that. Um, but... You know, like tonight, from the start, I felt like I got could get to where I wanted to go on the floor. And it's just a matter if you, you make or miss or make the right play, you know, distributing basketball. Um, and that'll continue the rest of the series. So I know they they got bodies that they can throw at me, um, whether it's him, Danny Green, Kyle Lowry at times. And, and they have help, you know, behind them. Just got to be aggressive like I've been, try to make the right play, and we live with the shots that, that I take. Mark in third row. Step Mark Schwartz, ESPN. Kyle Lowry seems to be a barometer for how the Raptors play. In what sense was that true tonight and in this series? He's such a smart basketball player, um, and he controls a lot of the pace for them. Nights where he gets it going scoring-wise, uh, he can make it tough on you uh, because they do have a lot of weapons around, and they like the space of floor. Uh, he has a ball in his hands a lot as a distributor, but when he turns it on, you know, putting ball in the basket, it's just, you know, that much tougher. So, um, you know, he made shots tonight, and you tip your cap to him because, uh, you know, he's he's willing to take him. And we just got to know where he is on the floor, just be able to use length and, and send bodies at him, uh, make him try to play in the crowd. But I think historically speaking in the playoffs, when he plays well, they usually go. Um, and we got to do something about it. Last question on standing on the Steph left. Steph from the Board Journal. Uh, Coach mentioned that you guys work very hard in fourth quarter, even though they got a big lead. Uh, you guys, you know, forced the turnover and the gut rebounds. How proud are you of you guys tonight? I mean, we fought, but we lost. So we got to go back to the drawing board and just uh, recalibrate for game four. Um, it's kind of been a, like a roller coaster type of series, first three games, and uh, I like the I like the things that we saw tonight that we can make adjustments on and and, and protect home court, you know, uh, on Friday. So we're gonna compete no matter no matter what happens. Um, you can count on that. So just got to execute and play smarter, um, and no matter who's out there on the floor. Do what you gotta do to, to win. Um, it's the it's the final, man. A lot of opportunity for us to uh, to you know get back in the series on Friday. Take it from there. Thank you, Steph. This concludes the session in here for tonight. It is time now for the shot chart presented by our friends at Kaiser Permanente. You look at Steph Curry. Historic performance with 47 points. Again, most he's had in the first quarter in the finals with 17 and the same with his 25 in the first half. Unfortunately, not enough. Big part of it, the depth and the defense of the Raptors roster. Ours expect Jared Greenberg and Wood. Brennan Haywood will take it for the next 